Good morning, friends. I I hope all are good in condition. Stay healthy, stay at home, stay healthy. From today to we are going to start biology class classes, and now we are going to study about cell. So what is cell? So if you take huge organisms or you take small organisms, so whatever it is. The heat from smallest organism to huge organism is minute part. That is called as cell. So the minute part of the body, whatever it is, organism, whether it is plants or animal, whatever it is, if you take the minute part of an organism, what it is called cell. So if you observe the cell, it is playing a key role in our life process. So, whatever process it is involving, so the cell is essential to perform some functions like metabolic activities, metabolic activities. It is essential to perform metabolic activities and also essential for growth. A cell also plays a key role in respiration, reproduction. So, like that, all the life process, what is going on in our body, that all of the processes are carried out by minute organism or minute part, which is called as cell. Hence, the cell is called as functional unit of the body. So. What is the cell? It is called as functional unit of the body. Why the cell is called as functional unit of the body? So it performs all the life process, any form of the activities like metabolic activities, like synthesis and degradation of proteins, or fats, or carbohydrates, whatever it is, and growth of organism, and to carry out respiration, to carry out reproduction, and to carry out the digestion, transportation. Any form of the life process going to be occurred that is performed by a single cell. That's what cell is called as a functional unit of the body. The so functional unit. And also, from minute organism like bacteria, virus, or whatever it is, from minute organism to use African effect or blue whale. If you take to form minute organism or to form huge organism, there is a basic structural unit is there. That is nothing but cell. So, what is cell also called as? Cell is also called as structural unit of the body. Structural unit. So, what we can say? The cell is called as functional. What is the function? All the functions are performed by a single cell and it is giving structural support or formation of organism. That's why it is called function unit. So what we can call as the cell is called as structural and functional unit of the body. So what is it is called as structural and functional unit? Cell is called as structural and functional unit of the body that is what it is called cell so if you observe the cell which is carrying out the various functions and which is giving support and which is essential in the formation of organism that's what the cell is also called as building block of the life so what is cell is also called as building block building block of life so this is what some introduction about the cell. Now we are going to discuss about the history behind the discovery of the cell. So first of all, the structure and whatever is the function we are studying now. Earlier it is not easy to study. So there, there are a lot of efforts behind the discovery and the structure of organization which we are going to study now. So first the cell was discovered by Robert Hooke. So in the year of 1665, in the year of 1665, Robert Hooke. So Robert Hooke 
discover the cell so for the discovery of the cell he made a simple microscope and which he used that microscope to study the structure and invention of the cell so for this purpose of the discovery he collected a small piece or slice of a cork of a tree so cork is nothing but if you remove the outer layer or bark of a tree under that we can see a thin white layer of the skin that is called as cork so he used to study the cell by using simple microscope which is collected from the cork of a tree when he start observation under the microscope he notice that arrangement of the cells so he what he observed that so he notice that cells are arranged like compartments or different different portions so under the portions what he notice is that so what he observed when he start observing under the microscope he noticed that some arranged some arrangements which he found like the arrangement are the portions which we can find in honey hive so honey hive so if you take honey bees house what you can call as honey hive so in honey hive we can also notice this kind of uh, different portions what these are called as compartments later on each compartment of these what he observed he called them as cell so this is where the discovery of a cell was started and named it as cell by the robert hook so what he did he collected a slice or a piece of a cork and allows to under observe under the simple microscope he notices that some compartments are arranged how honey hive is arranged so that is he call them these compartments as cell in this way we can see the cell was discovered by robert hook and later on so the robert hook developed simple microscope one developed by Anthony van Leeuwenhoek in the year of 1674. So what he did? So he improved the microscope which was invented by the Robert Hooke in the year of 1674. Anthony van Leeuwenhoek. he observed in a point and he noticed that the cells are freely moving so what he meant uh, he would say cells are freely moving sorry free moving so leven hook said that cells are freely moving that is one thing he said and also he said that in this compartment that is a cell it is also consisting of some organelles which are present inside that is uh, said by leven hook and also cells consisting of organelles organelles are also present in the cell that is also said by leven hook and later on in the year of 1831 1831 robert brown say he also collect a slice of oak plant he collect oak plant cork and 
and he used to observe under the microscope, he noticed a dark portion present in the cell and which he called as the nucleus. That is, the nucleus was discovered by Robert Brown. So, nucleus was discovered. The nucleus was discovered by Robert Brown. For his experiment, he collected oak plant. From that, he collected a slice or a piece of a cord and observed under the microscope. He noticed that there is a dark region or dark portion which is found in the cell and he called it as a nucleus. That is the nucleus was discovered by Robert Brown in the year of 1831. And later on, 1838 and 1839, in between these years, so two scientists called as Sleden and Schwann. Sleden and Schwann. These were the two scientists. They have developed cell theory. They developed cell theory. So, the cell theory was made by Sleden and Schwann in the year of 18. 38 and 1839. So, these two scientists, they initially they develop, developed cell theory. That is another discovery under the cell. Next, in the year of 1839, in the year of 1839, Perkins, in the year of 1839, Perkins, he said that the cell is consisting of a fluid or liquid material is present and that he called it as protoplasm. So, the fluid of cell was named as protoplasm by Perkins. Next. 1855, Wilchow, in the year of 1855, Wilchow, he said that the present cell which is having, that is derived from the pre-existing cell, that is any new cell to develop, they should come from the old cell, that is the existing cells are derived from the pre-existing cell. So, the present cell, whatever it is present, they are derived or developed or originated from old cells. That is said by Wilchow in the year of 1855. So, what he said? The cells are derived from pre-existing, means ordinary cells which are present. From the old cells, new cells are going to be produced. That is, cells are derived from pre-existing cells that is said by Wilchow in the year of 1855. So, from pre-existing cells. Pre-existing cells. Later on, after 1930s. 1930s, what is happening here? 1930s. So, electron microscope was discovered. Electron microscope was discovered and which makes us to study in detail about the structure and function of the cell and its components. That is what the use the development was acquired, which is started by Robert Hook. From there it is started and continued to study the cell and its components, what is the function. It all was after the invention of an electron microscope in 1930s. So, this is what pre study before we to know about the components of the cell and their function. So, let me see what is cell theory. As already we know that the cell theory was proposed by Sleder and Schwann in the year of 1838 and 1839. So, here is a plant or animal, whatever it is, any organism, any living form of the things which are found on the earth. So, they all are made up of cells and their products. That is the very most important 
invention that is said by sweden and schwab so what you said and sell me the So under cell theory, what Sweden and Schwann say? All the living organisms that are made up of cells and the product of the cells. Organisms are made up of. All organisms are made up of cells and the product of cells. This is the first part they said in cell theory. And another thing is also they say that cells are derived from pre-existing cells. That is also comes under the cell theory. So cells are derived from pre-existing. Pre-existing cells. So in this way, you can see that cell theory was proposed by Sweden and Schwann. These are the various milestones in the invention of the cell. And what we are going to study, like components of the cell, their function is because behind these all the events are occurred. That is the, the a brief history about the discovery of the cell and its various things.